okay so now let us see what are the materials required for the process of photosynthesis okay let us see all the materials or the components required for photosynthesis in detail the first component or material is the carbon dioxide we all know that plants need carbon dioxide which is combined with water and that is formed into glucose oxygen and water okay so now how this carbon dioxide is taken by the plants they take carbon dioxide present in the air through stomata stomata are responsible for capturing or taking the carbon dioxide present in the air now what are stomata stomata are tiny pores present on the leaves of the plant you can see in the figure also the stomata is given there refer to your book stomata are bound by two bean shaped guard cells now why these guard cells are present on the stomata or bound to the stomata because these guard cells regulate the opening and closing of the stomata we all know that photosynthesis takes place in presence of sunlight right so whenever there is sunlight these stomata open and as soon as the sun sets or there is no sunlight these stomata close so this is regulated by the guard cells present or bound on stomata okay now carbon dioxide is the most important component or material required for photosynthesis without carbon dioxide or in absence of carbon dioxide photosynthesis will not take place now how do we prove this we can prove this by conducting a simple activity in this activity what you have to do is you have to take two potted plants those are destarched okay it should not contain starch in it it should be destarched now what we do is we take potassium hydroxide potassium hydroxide can capture the carbon dioxide okay it has the ability to capture the carbon dioxide or absorb carbon dioxide so what happens now we take this potassium hydroxide in a glass and watch glass and keep it next to one of the plant now cover both the plants with bell jar okay as shown in the figure now when we cover both the plants with the bell jar the carbon dioxide present inside the bell jar will be absorbed by the potassium hydroxide that means one of the plant will not have carbon dioxide in it now place these bell jars in the sunlight and let it stay there for some few hours now what we do is after some time after few hours we pluck the leaves of both the plants and we conduct the test for starch for testing starch and when we test it when we conduct the test for starch we observe that the plant which had potassium hydroxide did not produce starch that means it was not able to do photosynthesis okay so this proves that for photosynthesis to occur or for the process of photosynthesis to occur that is the production of glucose production of starch to happen carbon dioxide is required